we're going to pick up here where we left off. So tibia and fibia were on our anterior view. So you have your anterior crest. So that's this line that runs down that tibia. Okay, so that's that anterior crest. Articular facets. Tibial plateau. So you've got your tibial plateau up here, okay? Because you can see this line going here and then this line going here. So that's your tibial plateau on either side. You've got the body of the fibula. So the body of the fibula right here. You've got your fibular notch of the tibia. So the fibular notch of the tibia right there. Your intercondylar eminence, medial and distal intercondylar tubercles. So right up here. So these are either the intercondylar eminences, the eminences, or the intercondyloid turbicles. Okay, so make sure that you know those by uh, those, um, at least those three names. Intercondyloid eminence, the uh, intercondyloid turbicles, medial and lateral, or the eminences. Your lateral uh, condyle, so you have your lateral condyle here on your tibia, lateral malleolus okay so this is a medial malleolus this is your lateral malleolus okay so lateral malleolus medial malleolus medial condyle so you have a medial condyle just like you have your lateral condyle okay tibial tuberosity so your tibial tuberosity is up here so tibial tuberosity right there sorry that's not your tibial tuberosity so tibial tuberosity you have your proximal extremity distal Let's see, we will find the tibial tuberosity as we go along here, okay? So your articular facets on the tibial plateau form a 10, or 20, 10 to 20 degree angle. So right here is what they're talking about. From this coronal plane, you are 10 to 20 degrees on that tibial plateau, okay? Apex of the styloid process, so your apex right here, the styloid process of the fibula right there, body and shaft of fibula, body and shaft of fibula, body and shaft of tibia, the fibular head, okay? So the fibular head is this portion right here, the head. You have your apex or the styloid process. You've got your um, lateral malleolus. So your lateral malleolus on the fibula, your medial malleolus on the tibia, your fibular neck. So the fibular neck, and then your tibial tuberosity. Which should be up in there, okay? <clears throat> so... So the femur 
This is your anterior view of your femur. It's the longest and strongest bone. So longest and strongest bone. Your patella is a half inch above the joint. Okay. So what they're talking about is here is your joint and that patella is a half inch above that joint. So if you're going to image the patella, you don't want to be centered right on the joint. You want to be centered a little bit above that joint. So the patellar surface is smooth, shallow, triangular depression at the distal portion of the anterior femur that extends up under the lower part of the patella. That's called the intercondylar sulcus or the trochlear groove. Okay. So you can see where this little arrow is pointing, the patellar surface, intercondylar surface, trochlear groove, that's underneath that um, patella, okay? So you got your body and your shaft, and if you're drawing a straight line down, you're at a fit 5 to 15 degree angle is the way that femur comes down. So it doesn't come down straight. It comes down at a 5 to 15 degree angle. So your femur position, uh, posterior view, so this is posteriorly and you can see that right here. So note the 5 to 7 degree angle is shown at distal, medial, and lateral condyles. That's talking about this right here, okay? So medial to lateral, a straight line, the medial to lateral epicondyle are about 5 to 7 degrees from being on the same plane. Keep that in mind because that becomes important when you're doing a lateral knee and we'll talk about that as we go along. So the posterior view of the distal femur best demonstrates the two large condyles which are here. So see these condyles? So your medial condyle, your lateral condyle. The two large condyles are separated by the deep intercondylar fossa. So this intercondylar fossa right in here, okay, separates that medial and that lateral condyle. The medial condyle extends lower than the lateral. So your medial is lower than your lateral. So see your lateral is higher there. And then that's why the central ray must be angled 5 to 7 degrees cephalid. So when you're doing a lateral, you're angled 5 to 7 degrees cephalid for a lateral knee to cause the two condyles to be directly superimposed when the femur is parallel to the image receptor. Okay? And actually, your image is going to be um, medial to lateral, okay? So when you're imaging medial to lateral, so medial to lateral, <clears throat> you're going to take your central ray, and that's going to be 5 to 7 this way to bring this medial condyle up and in line with that lateral condyle. That way you're going to image both the medial and lateral over top. You're going to superimpose them instead of where if you were to come straight on, then you're going to have your medial here, your lateral here, and you're going to close that joint space. Okay? <clears throat> so a lateral view. Uh, the distal femur and the patella, so you can see your patella here. Your patella is a sesamoid bone. The patellar surface, so the patellar surface is on the femur, okay? Popliteal surface um, is on the anterior aspect of that femur. So your patellofemoral joint so your patellar surface, but the joint space here is that patellar femoral joint. The patellar surface right there, okay, 
intercondylar sulcus, the trochlear groove, any one of those names is going to work for this portion. The patellar surface, intercondylar sulcus, trochlear groove. Your patellar femoral joint is that open space. So patella femoral joint. Your medial epicondyle, your lateral condyle, your lateral epicondyle. So your epicondyle and condyle, epicondyle, condyle. And then your intercondylar fossa, the notch, that groove right in there. Okay, so intercondylar fossa. Distinguishing difference between the medial and lateral condyles is the presence of the adductor turbicle on the posterior lateral aspect of the medial condyle. It is best seen on a slightly rotated lateral view of the distal femur and knee. So the adductor turbicle is on the medial condyle posterior lateral aspect. Okay? So definitely keep that in mind as we go along. The patella, your base is at the top. Your apex is at the bottom. Okay. Your posterior surface is the smooth surface and your anterior surface is rough. Okay. So the posterior surface forms that patella femoral joint. Your anterior surface um, is that rougher surface. The patella articulates with the femur, not with the tib fib. Okay. And you can see that back in um, the slides prior. So that patella articulates with the femur, not with the tip fit. So your knee joint, <clears throat> this is an oblique view. So the femorotibial and pat patellofemoral joints, okay, four major ligaments. Okay, so make sure that you can locate these ligaments. You have your posterior cruciate ligament, which is back here. Okay, so that posterior cruciate ligament, the PCL. You have your anterior cruciate ligament, which is right here. This anterior cruciate ligament. Posterior back here, anterior right there. The fibular collateral, and if we look at the fibula collateral, okay, so this is fibula, fibula collateral right here, okay, and the tibial collateral. So we have the, where is that tibia collateral? Here's your patellar ligaments. They're not showing us the um, tibia collateral. It's evidently got to be on that other side. So the knee joint is highly dependent on these two important pairs of major ligaments, the PCL and the ACL, for stability. So if you tear any one of these, the PCL or the ACL, you're going to minimize or lose stability within that knee. So your knee joint, this is an anterior view, so you're looking at it from behind because we're seeing these surfaces and we know that a PA view, you, you visualize those surfaces a whole lot better. So you can see your ACL, you can see your PCL right there, how they cross, you can see a transverse ligament. You can see the lateral and medial meniscus. So those are what your um, those are basically the pads that your knees um, uh, connect to, and um, basically shock absorbers within the within the knee joint. Okay. So your menisci, your superior and sagittal views, so your superior 
your sagittal view of your menisci. So your medial meniscus, your lateral meniscus, you can see your anterior cruciate, cruciate ligament, you can see the infrapatellar fat that's in the knee. And then on the side here, you can see your medial meniscus, you can't see your lateral, but the, your femur um, rides on those meniscus and um, basically it's a shock absorber. So the medial and lateral menisci are fibrocartilage discs between the articular facets of the tibia, the tibial plateau, and the femoral condyles. They act as shock absorbers, okay? So medial and lateral meniscus, the shock absorbers on the tibial plateau. Your articular capsule, <clears throat> Uh, the total knee joint is a synovial type, okay? Synovial type, enclosed in an articular capsule or bursa, which is a sac-like structure filled with lubricating type synovial fluid. So it's a bursa filled with synovial fluid, which makes the knee a synovial type of joint. Your lateral knee arthrogram shown here demonstrates the articular capsule or bursa as outlined by a combination of negative and positive contrast, which you can see in here. So your articular bursa right around here. So you can tell that there's a lot going on within that knee, okay? Your bursa, your suprapatellar up in here it probably shouldn't be that large, so something's going on with that bursa. Anatomy review. We've got the next couple of slides to go over these. So take each one of these pictures, make sure that you can name um, and recall everything, type everything as what's located within the next couple of images. So the eminences, eminences or the intercondyle or turbicles, either one of those for A, and you can see those there. Your tibial tuberosity right here on the front, okay? So that's the tibial tuberosity. The body of the tibia, so C is the body of the tibia or the tibia. Body of the fibula right back here, you can see that fibula the body of the fibula, medial malleolus on E, so medial malleolus and lateral malleolus, okay? So they kind of lay right over top of one another, but you can tell that um, E pointing to the medial, F pointing to the lateral. Uh, more anatomy reviews, so medial condyle of tibia, so make sure that you know which one's medial, which one's lateral, so your fibia lies lateral, okay, so the fibia lateral, so this means that's the medial condyle of the tibia, you've got the body of the tibia, you've got your medial malleolus, you've got the body of the fibula right here, You've got the neck of the fibula here, the neck. You've got the head of the fibula, head of the fibula, the apex up here of the styloid process. So apex, styloid process, either one. So apex or styloid process. I is the lateral condyle of the tibia. So lateral condyle here. So medial lateral, and then J is your intercondylar eminences, the eminences right there, uh, or the tibial spines. Anatomy review, once again, take these two images. I'm not going to go over the um, what they are because they are within your PowerPoint right here. Just make sure that you're able to label each one and know which each one is. Um, a through H is labeled, so A through H is labeled. And then on this one, anatomy review, um, A through 
I is labeled, so make sure that you can identify each one of those, A through I. Um, anatomy review one more time. These are going to be in your book, so make sure that you find them and are able to label them. Um, and they are labeled right here as well, so make sure that you're able to um, recall those, label them, and know where they are and joints of your lower limb. So um, your knee joint, your patella femoral, the proximal tibia, distal tibiofibular joint, um, they are going to be laid out here with the classification and mobility of the joints of the lower limb. Um, all joints, says except for the distal tibiofibular, are synovial. The distal tibiofibular is fibrous, Amphiarthrodial. The rest are synovial, diarthrodial. Okay. So joint movement type quiz, um, joint and movement type. So just know that interphalangeal is ginglimus or hinge. The MTP is modified ellipsoidal or condyloid. Just so you know, each one of these and they are laid out. So joint there movement type over here so you can recall them uh, for your uh, labeling or for your uh, chapter exam. Surfaces of the foot, we know that we have a dorsal uh, surface, a plantar surface, so um, dorsal flexion, plantar flexion, plantar flexion is going to be down, dorsal flexion is going to be up, you have inversion, varus. You have eversion, valgus. Know those movements, which way they're going to go, and we're going to talk about them on the next slide. So dorsiflexion, like I said, bringing the toes to the, uh, to the ceiling. Plantar is pointing the toes down. Your inversion is bringing your foot uh, medial, and then eversion is taking your foot um, lateral away from you. So to decrease the angle flex between the dorsum and pedis and the anterior part of the lower leg is to dorsiflex at the ankle joint. Okay, So dorsiflex at the ankle joint. Um, there are some quizmes going on here so make sure that you go through these. They're, um, they're worth knowing how many bones are found in the foot and we have 26. Uh, which of the following bones in the foot is fractured the most? And we've got the base of the fifth metatarsal. The strongest and largest of the tarsal bones is our calcaneus. We've got the sestinocalum talli is found on the calcaneus. So the articular facets making up the tibial plateau slopes posteriorly at a 10 to 20 degree angle. Another term for the patellar surface of the distal femur is the intercondylar sulcus. The knee joint is classified as a bicondylar joint. Okay. So technical and positioning considerations, 40 inches. Make sure that you shield the gonads. You have four-sided collimation. Um, the part parallel to the image receptor, central ray perpendicular to the part, proper anatomic side marker. And we'll get to those when we talk about positioning. So your KV ranges are usually 50 to 70 KV. You're going to do, use a short exposure time. It's a small focal spot, so SFS, small focal spot. Uh, make sure you have adequate mass. And then grids for anatomy that measure over 10 centimeters. And usually that's um, for the knee and then for um, from the knee on up the femur, you're going to more than likely use a grid. Um, there are some texts that don't use a grid for the knee, but um, that's just a matter of preference. So patient history, we will talk about this patient history when we start doing our 
positioning, but once again, why are you getting the x-ray? Are you having pain? Um, one to 10 pain scale, make sure you ask that. Also, if they're injured, how did it happen? When did it happen? Is there any swelling, bruising, lacerations? Make sure that you get a good history. And then a history of any previous injuries. Where is the previous injury? Um, when did it happen? Um, and what kind of injury was it? If there's no injury, um, just ask, is it for arthritis or osteoporosis, cancer, etc.? Have they been diagnosed with anything? And we will cover this again as well when we um, go into positioning. So that will be the next video.